Hello and welcome to Talking Papers, the podcast where we talk about papers and let the papers do the talking. And today we have the paper VLN BERT, a recurrent vision and language BERT for navigation. And our guest today is Itzong Hong. Hello, Itzong. Hi, Isaac. Can you introduce yourself? I'm currently a third year PhD student at the Australian National University. Uh, and I'm supervised by Professor Stephen Good here. Um, and Professor Le Xin Xie, also from ANU, and Dr. Chi Wu uh, from the University of Adelaide. Um, so I've been working on um, a vision language, especially vision language navigation problem for two years now. Uh, and I'm happy to share this paper with you. So who are the authors of the paper? Um, so I'm the first author, uh, and um, this is a cooperative paper with um, um, my supervisor, Chi, uh, from uh, Adelaide, and then uh, Yuan Kai, uh, also from Adelaide, um, and Christian, um, who is um, previously a PhD student uh, at ANU, but now he's moved to um, uh, AIML um, in Adelaide, and, and then uh, my chair supervisor, Stephen Good. Okay, so let's start with the abstract or the TLDR portion of the this episode. So what is the paper about in two, three sentences? Um, yeah, so in the paper, we introduce a recurrence into the multi-layer transformer to um, keep track of a state representation um, for a sequential decision process. And we implement the idea onto uh, the transformer pre-trained with uh, vision language knowledge. And then we apply the network um, for um, the vision language navigation problem, uh, which greatly improves the agent performance. Um, yeah, and we call our method recurrent VL invert. That was a mouthful. So let's let's break it down to pieces so the listeners can understand. So what is what what problem is the paper addressing? Yeah. So um, we're looking into the vision language navigation problem, uh, or simply VLN. Uh, so the task uh, requires an agent to navigate in um, previously unseen and photorealistic environments, following human natural language instructions. Um, so it is a very important problem, I think, because um, it is a important step towards building a um, interactive embodied AI that um, assists human in daily work. So what are the main challenges in this domain? Um, I think it's uh, how to train, it's basically how to learn about this cross-model correspondence, right? How to know um, which part of the uh, very complex uh, human natural language is uh, related to uh, what the agent sees, right? the visual observation, basically, how to relate them together and then derive some useful information to achieve some tasks. Okay, so let's just, just make it a little bit easier. So for the completely novice listener, um, you say cross-model. So what are your input modalities? What is, what, what is the input to your method? Um, so, for example, in the uh, VLN task, the input um, um, are the navigational instructions, so which basically described how an agent should uh, move forward, how it should navigate to a target. Um, and then uh, the other part of the input is the visual input, so basically um, RGB image uh, of the scene. Mm -hmm. So you have images and basically sentences, right? Text. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And what is the output then? The output is basically a sequence of um, actions that moves the agent um, towards the target. And when you say agent, I'm assuming you're not meaning 007. So when you say agent, that refers to what? Uh, that basically is a, is a robot. It's a robot in a, um, in our case, it's a robot in a simulated environment. Okay, so what is the main contribution of, of this paper? First of all, we propose, um, I think, a very uh, simple but effective idea, which is to introduce the recurrence into this multi-layer transformer network. And we show that this um, transformer network itself can function as a recurrent network uh, to keep track of a state representation. And uh, we think this could be important because um, it can be applied to other tasks that require this sequential decision process. Um, so not only navigation, but also like in dialogue scenarios. So apart from that, uh, more, uh, uh, more technically, um, the second contribution I think is uh, we actually propose a multitasking network. Um, so we ask uh, uh, this uh, recurrent transformer that we built to 
um, encode uh, language inputs, uh, the instructions, encode visual inputs, so the observations, and then learn about the cross-modal correspondence, um, and then function as a recurrent network, and then uh, decision making. Um, and then for the decisions, um, it um, uh, even includes uh, the actions for navigation and the um, object grounding for, for the referring expression task. So basically localizing an object while moving forward. So before we dive into the method, um, if you had to choose one or two papers that are super relevant and anyone reading your paper should read beforehand, which papers would those be? I think the attention is all you need paper always comes first because it is where this self-attention and transformer and this pre-trained uh, uh, bird model idea have originated from. And basically they propose to stack the soft attention um, blocks vertically and horizontally to create this so-called multi-layer transformer, um, uh, which is very simple and flexible model for uh, learning these correspondences between inputs of the same modality or different modalities. And also, it turns out to be a great model for pre-training. It has achieved a significant performance in almost all the natural language processing and uh, vision language tasks. So now more and more people want to apply it for um, this navigation problem. Yeah, so that's the first paper. The second one, uh, I would say, uh, is the uh, prevalent, uh, uh, which inspired our, our paper a lot. The title is Towards Learning a Generic Agent for Vision and Language via Pre-Training. Um, and in the paper, they basically pre-train a BERT model for encoding the navigational instructions in navigation tasks. But by comparing to our work, um, we didn't do pre-training, and our focus is to investigate uh, how could we make a pre-trained model better use the pre-trained knowledge. Okay, so you mentioned a lot of very technical terms here. So... Now that we talk about the approach, let's try to break it down, right? You said transformer, attention, soft attention. Um, can you just briefly give the novice listener like a one sentence? What does it do? What does it mean? Um, soft attention is uh, essentially um, dot product waiting, basically. It was first proposed in, um, I think, in a paper called Show a Ten and Tell, uh, which is doing uh, image captioning task. So we need to figure out which part of the image is most relevant, most salient um, to describe. So they come up with this attention idea to um, look at each part of the image and then to find out which part is most relevant. And that idea has been extended to uh, many other tasks. For example, in natural language processing, uh, we need to know which words are, are related to each other because the words often work together to clarify a meaning. Right? And as well as in vision and language, right? for the visual part, uh, we can learn from the language which part of the image is most relevant to the language, to the instruction, for example. And in terms of the language side, it, we can learn from the image to know which words are the most important. So uh, soft attention has become, uh, I think, the, probably the most important mechanism in all the vision and language studies. And then about the transformer, which is basically... Um, to stack this soft product based soft attention blocks um, horizontally and vertically. So to allow it to um, go wider and deeper uh, to um, extract more high level and abstract information uh, to learn about this very deep relationship between the inputs. Uh, and it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to try to say it in my own words. Okay, so basically what you're saying is your input, your images and text have a lot of information. Some of it is important. Some of it is not important. And basically what the attention mechanism does, it basically highlights or gives higher weight to the important stuff and, and less weight to the unimportant stuff. And that allows like the network to, to use that in order to make good inference. Yeah, that's great. That's a much easier way. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about the approach. So yeah, so your input, you get your images, you get your, your instructions as text. What do you do next? I think, as I said, we introduced this recurrent into Transformer, right? And, and the way that we, we did it is actually um, use one of the input tokens uh, as the state representation. So we call the input to Transformer network uh, tokens. So for example, in our case, we have language tokens, which is basically each word in the instructions, and then the visual tokens, which are basically the agent observations. 
So usually people will just pass this uh, vision and language tokens into the transformer uh, to get some uh, better representations of these two inputs. But now, apart from the visual and language tokens, we add an additional state token to represent the agent state. And we keep passing this state representation at each iteration of this uh, navigation process. Uh, and this representation will basically collect uh, useful information from the uh, language part and the new observation at each time step, um, while the past information stored in this state representation will also help the transformer to make a decision. So, so the transformer itself is actually um, pretty straightforward. We simply add this state token into the network. So when you say make a decision, it's basically where to go next, right? Yes. Uh, and, and in our case, it's actually by selecting which navigable directions that has a uh, image which is most relevant to the instructions. Mm -hmm. So for example, if the instruction mentioned a table, then um, the image which has a table should be the correct direction to navigate. Mm -hmm. Actually, I feel like we should like talk about this in a context of an example. So can you give an example of an input uh, and what is the expected output? In the task that we are um, addressing, the instruction for navigation is actually, um, can be either high level or low level, right? So low level means it's very detailed, very specific. Go to the table, turn left to the kitchen, pass the living room, and then stop at somewhere, right? So um, so the agent at each, time, at each step in the environment will need to um, know, for example, which part of the instruction has been completed and what to do next, right? So for example, if it says, um, go to the table and then um, enter the kitchen. If it uh, already passed the table, then it should know, okay, now it's time for going into the kitchen. Right? So it will select the direction uh, which is heading to the kitchen to navigate. Yeah, that's a great example. So let me ask you this question. What is your favorite part of your method? So yeah, I think the most uh, important part is that uh, we actually, we sort of validate a hypothesis that um, multi-layer transformer can actually function as a recurrent network. Because no one, um, I think no one has tried so before. Right? Everyone just used it as a encoder to generate some representations. But we think it is actually possible to use it just as using some other recurrent network like LSTM, long short term memory. And, and because that uh, it is very simple, so it can be applied to many different form of this transformer um, architecture. And, we, and in our paper, we actually tried on two different uh, transformers and they both work very well. Um, and I think also because of, of the simplicity um, and efficiency, I think it might, it has a potential to become a general um, model for some other problem rather than navigation um, that involves um, a partially, what we call the partially observable Markov decision process. So basically a process that requires this sequential decisions. Okay, so let's move on to the results section. So what are the experiments that you've done and you tested it on? So I think our uh, experiments, memory includes three parts. Uh, so the first part is to um, evaluate on standard benchmarking data sets and metrics. So that's basically comparing with others. So we evaluate um, our model without pre-training, pre-train with general vision and language knowledge, and pre-train especially for navigation. Um, so we compare all these three models uh, with previous state-of-the-art networks um, to show the difference. So that's the first thing. The second is that we did lots of ablation um, study to show that it is actually the design that helps rather than just probably some noise um, that improves the performance. Right? So we start with a baseline network and we replace the, the components in this very simple baseline network with our transformer network. And then uh, we found that, uh, so, so we keep replacing the language encoder first, and then the language and visual encoder, and then we introduce this state uh, representation, uh, and then we use it to do decision making. So we did it step by steps uh, to replace the components in the baseline networks, and we found that the more functions it replaces, the higher performance gain it can achieve. Right? So uh, I think that really shows that uh, our design allows the network to adequately benefit from the pre-trained knowledge. The third part is we, um, uh, we did lots of visualizations, um, um, such as uh, the training curve, and then um, uh, we also show the average attention, language attention over all the instructions, um, and then we go detailed to show 
um, the uh, layer-wise and step-wise attentions in transformers. So the attentions across the state representation, the language representations, and the visual representations to show that how this attention across these different modalities uh, in, uh, of inputs has been aggregated and um, evolves at different layers. And then finally, that helps to make a decision. Um, so do you have any unexpected or interesting finding? I think I just briefly mentioned that uh, when I talk about visualization. Uh, and yes, our visualization is, 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 is very interesting, I think, very inspiring. So again, we can see how the attention evolves at each transformer layer. Right? Um, it, it sort of um, spread it out um, across all the tokens at the beginning, and then we can see clearly that the attention shifts to the most relevant part of the instruction and the visual um, features, and then uh, it aggregates uh, more and more to the most important tokens um, that helps uh, to make a decision. So I highly recommend uh, interested audience to um, look at the, uh, our appendix for those visualizations. Conclusion and future work section. How do you see the impact of the paper, and are there any interesting papers that followed it uh, by you or other groups? Yeah, I think the best thing is that we introduced this simple, again, simple and effective idea um, that make the transformer to function as a recurrent network. Um, and that really helps the model to uh, make better use of the pre-trained knowledge. We actually um, gain huge performance comparing to a previous uh, model, which just used the pre-trained model for the uh, input encoder, right? But here we use it as a navigator network, actually. And besides that, because the idea is uh, um, simple and effective, so I think it can be applied to uh, many other problems that require this sequential decision process. So yeah, I think it will be interesting to explore it to other um, tasks as well. Can you give an example to such tasks? For example, the most relevant one, or the closest one, uh, visual dialogue, which is uh, human and then the agent needs to describe, uh, sorry, discuss about an image. Right? So the human can ask questions uh, or answer questions. Um, and then this is a sequential decision process. And um, it's very important for the, for the, uh, for the robot to know uh, which question that has been discussed, like what information have been unknown in the past discussion and how would that influence our new discussions. And then as for the question, um, are there any uh, paper follow it? Uh, I think there's now only one citation on Google Scholar, uh, which is a paper. Um, it's, so it's like a survey paper that uh, look into all the past state-of-the-art navigator for the this vision language navigation task and compare them and um, to see where they perform well and why they fail. But uh, I know there's... Uh, the paper is getting lots of attention, I think, because many um, um, people from different groups around the world have been uh, contacting me to ask for the uh, paper, for the code, and um, it seems that um, they're quite interested in the method. For the next PhD student reading your paper, what are the mm -hmm. next obvious or things that you think are going to be impactful? Yeah, so I think there are some quite interesting uh, extension to this work. Uh, one is uh, a better way to do pre-training because now uh, we just apply the network uh, that is pre-trained on some general uh, vision language knowledge and um, some very simple uh, uh, navigational oriented uh, pre-training tasks. So I think there are much, much more better um, pre-training objectives designed out there that can be um, applied to pre-train this model and then get better improvement. So that's the first thing. And, and pre-training is, I mean, obviously very popular today in vision and language domain. So I think that is a good direction to go. Second thing is it would be great if um, there's a way to improve the memory efficiency because transformer is a very large model and consumes a huge amount of memory during training. Um, so it would be great if there's uh, any way that we can cut down this memory to make it much more efficient and, and I think that would be very helpful, right? And, and especially um, if we extend this to the navigation problem, which requires much longer steps to complete, um, and this will be issue. The third part is, um, I think, and also I think it's my favorite part, is um, the transformer is now being applied not just as a um, encoder to get better representation, but it's been applied to achieve many interesting purposes, such as creating a graph model, 
uh, grave kin or topological map, um, and etc. And I think it would be very interesting if we can extend this recurrent bird to achieve those interesting um, functions. And, and and that would be great to you know just you know rather than just use a transformer to sort of brute force solving the task, uh, we actually put more design, uh, more reasoning um, into the model and allow it to uh, uh, accomplish more interesting tasks. So you said that you're doing all the experiments in simulation. So how fast is it? Is it something that can run in real time on an actual agent or are we super far away from this being feasible? Actually, it highly depends on the network. Uh, I haven't tested our network, but um, there are other uh, researchers, um, um, they have deployed a network train in a simulator to a real robot in real world, and that works uh, very well, I think. Um, but their network model is um, smaller, so it can process with a much shorter time. But for um, a much more complicated network like ours, I think, I'm not sure, I, we have to experiment to find out. So now to my favorite part of the podcast, what did reviewer to say? Can you share some insight or comment that a reviewer had that made your paper better? Um, yeah, so about the comments. Um, so most of the comments that we receive uh, actually about um, justifying some design details um, because I think it's a quite a new design and it takes some time to understand, fully understand it. And um, also about clarifying the experiments and visualizations. Honestly, I don't think there is any very tough questions in the reviews, but they did ask for um, additional um, ablation experiments, and we did those experiments and put them into the final version. So what ablation did they ask for, and what was the like? What outcome did you see from that? So the most important one, I think, uh, or the one that interested most people, is that we have a, um, a sort of a trick to reduce the memory consumption during training. Uh, which is uh, to only uh, allow the model to do language self-attention at initialization rather than each step. And then uh, we didn't do a very comprehensive ablation on that part uh, because they apparently they can, there's a lot of things to try. For example, um, different batch size, larger batch size, but accumulate gradient uh, or um, you know, multi-GPU training, uh, so multi-processing, um, et cetera. Um, so they asked for this and we, um, add those experiments in the final version. And I think that they're, they're really good questions which um, really help us to strengthen our arguments. Thank you for listening. That's it for this episode of Talking Papers. Please subscribe to the podcast feed on your favorite podcast app. All links are available in this episode description and on the Talking Papers website. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, sponsor it, or just share your thoughts with us, feel free to email talking.papers.podcast at gmail.com. Be sure to tune in every week for the latest episodes. And until then, let your papers do the talking.